today with the Asus Zephyrus G16 from 2024. Do you remember the 23 version? I did love it, but right over here, there are a few upgrades that I want to share with you because this, in my opinion, it's just an awesome machine for gaming and productivity. Now, the video will be a bit long, so I will leave some timestamps right over there that you can jump for benchmarks or design or whatever you want to check it out. Now, it is a gaming laptop that you can use on school, at office and no one will be aware that this is a gaming machine because it is elegant sleek and without a gaming personality with the exception of this slash at the back which is a touch and it is a rog machine so it needed to have something like that now it has windows 11 pro and if you still haven't activated your license on your computer don't forget to check out keysfan where you can find budget official om keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get a bit cheaper so just in case the link will be just next to the asus zephyrus g16 from 2024. now starting with the laptop itself it's really thin. It has only 1.49 centimeters thickness with a premium ultra thin 16 inches all aluminium chassis available in two colors. This is the platinum white and there is the Eclipse Grey. Now one of the things that we might notice when we look at pictures and I was surprised at that is that this platinum white really looks like white plastic or something similar but when we touch it everything is aluminium premium aluminium really lightweight and a great construction overall on the back cover we have this cut right over here which just looks awesome in my opinion but let me know down below in the comment section if you love it like this or if you prefer a version without any cuts at all now it's called the slash lighting giving the zephyrus a design with a more aggressive touch after all this is a rock machine so it's normal to have a touch here or there we can use any of the 15 combinations available or we can use the activated through the audio or even to receive notifications there are different configurations of the g16 but this one that i've got right over here comes with the intel Core Ultra 7 155H CPU up to 4.8 GHz, 16 cores and 22 threads with an NVIDIA RTX 4070 laptop graphics, 32GB of LPDDR5X RAM and 1TB of NVMe SSD. The screen is just awesome. It's an OLED panel. It's called the ROG Nebula Display with a 2.5K resolution, 500 nits, OLED panel panel is just awesome if we take a look at some of the vivid colors that we can get and the contrast it's just wow even at angles that uh, are just impossible and we are never going to use there's no color or image distortion which is just awesome it has an anti-reflective layer and the refresh rate is 240 hertz it has dolby vision display hdr and g-sync with only 0.2 milliseconds of response time so if you are looking for a machine to edit videos this will be great but if you are looking for something to play games wow this is a awesome awesome machine now here at the top we will find a webcam integrated webcam with a full hd resolution and also a integrated microphone with noise cancelling so if we want to do a video call we can or if we want to record or stream our gaming sessions with the webcam we can also do that without any issues whatsoever connectivity wise it has a usb type c 3.2 generation 2 with display port 1.4 and power delivery a usb type a 3.2 generation 2 and a sd card reader uhs 2. on the other side it has a microphone and headphone combo and a usb type a 3.2 generation 2 one usb type c thunderbolt 4 with display port 2.1 and yes we can connect external gpus in the future if we need to i love thunderbolt and besides being able to use gpus we can also use storage devices such as this one right over here which is a thunderbolt only and i use to transfer huge files among my computers and all of them require to have thunderbolt so if you want fast connectivity for ssds or gpus in the future 
we will be covered. Besides that, it also has an HDMI 2.1 port and the Asus Slim Power Jack that can give us a fast charging of 50% in just 30 minutes with a total capacity of 90 watts hour, which will last all day. Of course, depending on what we are doing. If we do a lot of Cinebench benchmarks, pushing out the CPU and GPU to the maximum or playing games or things like that, then the battery will drain like any other. But if we are watching videos and browsing the web and do our homework, we will have battery for the whole day without any issues whatsoever. We don't require to use the original power adapter. We can charge it via the USB ports that it has, just in case you are wondering. It has a chiclet keyboard Board, super comfortable with a key travel distance of 1.7 millimeters and a customizable RGB. But don't worry, if you want to have it on your office and you don't want to let anyone know that it's a RGB laptop, you can have it deactivated, uh, which at this moment is only sleeping. So if I press a key, it will uh, enter the backlit. But of course, we can use the backlit with the white keys or we can choose any RGB so it's just according to our taste the RGBs are there the decision to use it or not it's on us in terms of the trackpad it's just awesome it has 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters really a good precision but a huge size which will allow us to do any kind of work and this is possibly the biggest trackpad that I've used so far. Let's take a look at some numbers and starting with Geekbench 6, we got a single core score of 2218 and a multi core score of 13246 with the GPU score of 109000. Now, just for reference, the computer that I use on a daily basis is a Apple Mac Studio with the M1 Max desktop computer with a great performance. But if you look at the results that I have, 2,400 on single core score, which is superior, but on a multi-core score, 12,464, and on the GPU, almost half, which is 61,000. So just for reference, the computer that I use, which I love, and it's enough for my needs, my desktop, is inferior to the laptop that it's right over here, the G. 16 so just for reference taking a look at the cinebench 2024 so that you can compare with other machines just if you are wondering which one to purchase on the cpu side we will get 199 on the single core score and 917 on multi-core score and gpu with 10,500. So right over here, you will be able to compare with other machines on the Cinebench benchmark and also on other machines that have their scores available publicly and you can directly compare the type of performance of the CPU and also the GPU. Wi-Fi, I didn't even test it. It has Wi-Fi 6E, but I was downloading 3D Mark and I realized that it was hitting the 500 megabits per second, which is the maximum of my connection. So I didn't bother to do the speed test because it was already done really, really fast. I believe that we can achieve faster speeds, but this was the limit that I could achieve. In terms of SSD, we are talking about roughly 3000 megabytes per second reads and on right so just great speed and if we take a look at some of the gaming benchmarks 3d mark time spy 4k and although we have a 2.5k display right over here i was connected via hdmi to my computer so we were using 4 on the test and the result that I got was 4896 and on 3d mark speedway 4k 2570 so these are the results that we can compare with other machines in terms of gaming performance what did I feel I did test out with Forza Horizon 5 which is a game that I love and although it's not the heaviest one it will give us a easy idea of what we can achieve in terms of performance now with the extreme preset everything at maximum i was able to get 2.5k resolution in this particular case using the computer display the laptop display we were getting roughly 65 to 80 frames per second without any issues so if by any reason we want more frames per second we just need to tweak down a little bit here and there and we will have some great results also on back for blood at 2.5k resolution with the preset ultra we were getting 120 to 150 
140 frames per second which is just awesome and a great experience especially these kind of results on the OLED display that we have right over here. Also tested with DaVinci Resolve for video editing and I did throw in a timeline that I did a while back. It's a complex 4K timeline project with multiple sections, multiple camera setups, actually multi-cam setups right over here as well. Clips from various cameras like the Sony ZV-10, ZV-1, iPhone 11 Pro, Insta360 Go 3 and one or other that I can't recall. The performance was just awesome and rendering that 17 and 20 second minute timeline took only 14 minutes and 20 seconds, which is a spectacular result for this kind of project, which is really heavy and we could render less than the real time of that particular project. If your project is less complex and a simple timeline of 4K or 1080, expect to have better results. So in conclusion, what did I enjoy most about the G16? First of all, it's something that we can't stop noticing, which is the OLED display. Even now, when I look at it, it's just awesome. So this is my favorite part. The second one was the design and build quality is just awesome. And then and third, the specifications, which outlast my desktop computer that I use at this moment. The only thing that I was not a fan and still not is the price. Link down below so that you can check it out. But to be fair, if I compare this to my Mac Studio, I did pay 2500 for that and I don't have an OLED display. I can't take it anywhere because it's not a laptop. I don't have keyboard no RGB and what not. So to be fair, it's not that expensive when we put side by side with other machines, not talking about that it has a superior performance. That being said, hope that the video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.